first off, I just wanted to say that we are very excited to have our students return. So um, at the middle school, we've been working really hard over the last couple of weeks to make sure that um, our building is ready for Monday. To start, we're going to end up by keeping our school day uh, the very same as we have it right now with kids staying in the same classroom for the day. Um, we felt that it was most important to get all of our students back safely and successfully first. We do hope to move towards a more typical school day as we move through the spring, but we just wanted to make sure that everyone felt comfortable in their first few weeks back before we made any major um, changes. We are so, going to keep kids in the same class um, we hope to look towards moving towards a more typical schedule of switching classes um, as the spring moves on. Right now, we're going to follow the Department of Ed guidelines for keeping kids in the classroom and using some alternative spaces for lunch um, so that we can ensure the six feet of distance that's needed while eating. Um, and again, that's something that we'll hopefully move towards as we move throughout the spring. With that being said, uh, we're able, we do have a larger eighth grade class. So um, it may be that when people are hearing about the distance between desks that our sixth grade class is a lot smaller than our eighth grade class. So it may be, we may, we will be able to have those desks a little bit further apart. Um, but we will be at at least the minimum three feet in between desks from seat to seat and um, kids will be following and will be following those guidelines for students. We will still be continuing with entering through separate doors, exiting through separate doors um, and a tiered dismissal process for, to ensure that we're not all leaving the building at once. Uh, next, that's going to be happening next Monday and that's the 15th. We anticipate the middle school and high school coming back. If we move forward now to the 22nd, the following Monday, that's when we're going to have the remainder of our students come back in grades one through five. Vaccinations for teachers um, have already started. Um, the state says it officially starts on um, March 11th, um, but I've been getting notification from teachers uh, that they've been vaccinated because we had a running list in hopes that we could vaccinate teachers ourselves and they're asking me to remove them from the list because they've already been vac vaccinated. We've heard nothing from the Department of Public Health about being able to vaccinate our uh, teachers ourselves and I'm the teachers it runs the gamut between the three different vaccines that they're getting. A multifaceted approach must be implemented in order to provide healthy learning environment for allowed students to return to the in-person learning as addressing through the HVA systems alone will not provide required environment. A combination of HVAC system modifications, personal hygiene practices, masking, social distancing, and cleaning and disinfecting protocols should be addressed to achieve safe and in-person learning. We've now uh, portable HEPA air filters. They've been distributed throughout the district. We have the window fans provided in each building. I have filters we upgraded, recommended by the CDC and ASHRAE guidelines. Uh, Univent controls, that's another one that we've been continuing to doing. We've started those. We're also working with vendors providing quotes for further work to be done. We have deficiencies. Yep, we, we do. So we've got non-function and disconnected equipment. Most of the equipment in here is between, well, the, the middle school is 22 years old and the useful life of most of this equipment is 20. Uh, space is relying on open windows only for ventilation. Uh, in order to do that, we, we've provided uh, air purification to have, uh, filters. Uh, I've talked about those. You've seen pictures of those. This is the strategies that we do in the mitigation. Uh, highest level filtration in the HVA system. Uh, ASHRAE and CDC has, has asked for a MERV-13 filter and everything. MERV-13 filters are great, but the problem with MERV-13 is you can't put them in the older units. They just will not the older units will will not be able to take be able to take that air, and they'll uh, they'll just die out. Um, they they can't they can't push the air through those filters. Uh, portable HEPA filtration units we have them in every single classroom. Um, I think we we've got them in the cafeterias. We've got them in wherever we can put them. We've been putting them. Uh, daily disinfection. We I've said it many times. These custodians are doing it day in and day out, three four times a day. Um, which is providing us to have these students come back. Uh, open windows. I'm in my office. My window's open. I got a, I got a sweater on. This is what we need to do. It's spring. Let's get, get the windows open, get this air flowing. With the window open, with the HEPA filter on and an exhaust fan, we are pushing the enough, um, enough air around to get the, the uh, air exchanges that we need per our classrooms.